Are you filled up? Come on, are you filled up? You better get your notes out. Open mouth, insert fire hose. We got a lot to do in a little bit of time. So, nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts. Uh, I am going to talk really, really fast. The blueprint to prosperity is the written. The audio is the proven plan. And you can get it at theprovenplan.com. Some people are auditory learners. Some people like to read to learn. And it has been proven that what people read and what they listen to goes in way, way better. Does that make sense? I don't know statistics. I can't remember. I can't hold a thought in a bucket. So uh, you just have to make sure people read it and you have to make sure they listen to it. And the CD series is, what, three CDs? And it's available at theprovenplan.com. And again, the blueprint to prosperity. And it's simple, simple stuff. This business is 90% mindset. It's only 10% percent mechanics and you know me I'm usually teaching the mindset today I feel compelled to give you some mechanics are you good with that yeah. okay fantastic there he is Ow! he's like he barks <laughs> okay so anyway the first thing is I do like to cover the invitation how do you invite people to take a look at this information well I'm not gonna ever change I'm an old dog 53 I started when I was 48 and I'm just gonna get older and better. And I'm gonna tell you something, that ABC Primetime Investigative Report is the best thing I have ever seen. I have seen grown men, network marketers cry because they did not have the third party validation that we have. So ABC, John Quinones, 45% reduction in oxidative stress in 14 days, that is always where I'm gonna begin. Why? Because that's the beginning of our story. Our story began in 2005. The ABC investigative report aired on the news. So when I saw that thing and the bar came up and said after taking protanum, they could no longer distinguish the blood of an 80 year old versus that of a 20 year old, I could barely catch my breath, truly. I mean, I was so excited. And then the university studies rolled up and I thought, oh my gosh, I gotta go, I gotta go work. I didn't even know anything. But I was so excited to share the story. Now, you've heard it said in network marketing that facts tell and stories sell, right? So if you're gonna sit there and say that we're on the NASDAQ and you're gonna tell them that we went from 3 million to 208 million, you're gonna tell them that, you know, that we're, we've got peer reviewed published studies at pubmed.gov and you don't tell them the story, I would submit to you that they're gonna see this. Wah, 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 The more excited you are, and you just spit out a bunch of facts and figures, nobody's gonna hear what you're saying. Do, would you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna see that you're excited, they're gonna see that you're Steve Wheeler, but you're gonna be like a dog being dragged behind a car. You're going, but you're not doing it. You're not running fast, right? You're getting, you're a dead dog. By the time, have you ever done it? You do a presentation and you're like, dang, I was good. <laughs> I was good. I had pronounced all the words right. I remembered every university. I was amazing. And then you think, why is the person in front of me completely glazed over and they're ready, they're running for the door? Like, they're, are we done? Can I go now? And then you ask yourself, what did I learn about the person in sitting in front of me? And the answer is, nada, zero. Then you have failed because it's never ever about you. It's about the person in front of you. And your job is to make a friend or engage your friend because after all, we're meant to start in our warm market. So your job is to engage your friend, meaning find out what's going on in their life. How are the kids? You were getting ready to go to Kentucky last time we talked to visit your ailing mother. How did that trip go? I heard, I remember you started a new job last month. How is that job going for you? I remember your daughter was going to a dance recital and you hoped that she was gonna be the star of the show. How did she do? I remember you telling me you were just about to close a huge piece of real estate. How did that go? I remember you just were gonna start singing in your church choir. Are you singing and are you enjoying it? Do you understand? It isn't about spitting up all over them and, and, and barfing out all of these details. Do you get it? Yeah. Yeah. So we've all done that. I am so guilty, it's ridiculous. Honestly, like I've done it 
I, 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 could, I could do it today. I could make a mistake and forget. It's never about you, it's always about the person sitting in front of you. And I, again, will tell you that I believe that our story here at Life Vantage is unlike any network marketing story that's ever been told, ever. And here's why. Most network marketing companies, they say that someone gets together, some real big business guys, usually guys, or, or some women if it's jewelry or home decor, right? And they say, you know what, we need to start a network. And here's what we're gonna do. We get to get, we gotta get together and we've got to, this is a good business model. It's coming of age, we need to do a network. And they say, great, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna do a product. What's the product gonna be? Well, it needs to be something for the baby boomers. Uh, people are aging, even the millennials, they're into looking and feeling better. Let's do wellness. Okay, good, let's do skincare. Let's do a vitamin, let's do a juice. Let's do an energy drink, am I right? So they do that, and then they say, now we need to have a really good story. And then they make up a story. And it's all cool and glitzy and some amazing berry from the Amazon and, you know, all kinds of stories. And I still drink that stuff every day because that was a story. It was good. And I love it. But here's the thing. In our company, the ABC clip aired back in 2005 and $5 million worth of orders came in because at the end of the clip it said, for more information, go to abcnews.com and everybody did, right? $5 million came in. There was only one little problem and that's that Joe McCord was a researcher, a scientist. He didn't have a sales team. He didn't have a marketing team. Do you guys recognize this story? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Does it move you? Yeah. Did, it get ex did you get excited when you heard it? and feel like you were in on a little secret, yes. right? And there were, nobody got their call return, nobody got their email return, nobody got their product. Because it, there was no infrastructure, there was nobody with the little headset on, ready to take your orders. There was no infrastructure in place. But th th what's the next part of the story, right? There was no infrastructure in place, but other people were on the couch that night, Dr. Joe, or other doctors, researchers, and scientists, and they called the company. And they said, listen, we are excited. I mean, we, we're doctors, researchers, and scientists, and we want to start, we want to initiate and fund some studies. And they did, funded studies all around the country and all around the world, and list some of the places, right? And finally, I mean, this is the only reason we have peer-reviewed published research. Do you guys get that? Do you think they would have done research on the product if we were a network marketing company? No. Do you? No. no, but because we were not a network, we were a biotech company, research was initiated and funded all around the country, all around the world. Still couldn't get the product out there. Years later, we got some research. Finally, the consultant says we got to take this into person-to-person -person distribution, and they do. And we go from three, well, actually, first of all, they tried to put it, read GNC, Rite Aid, CVS, sold a half a bottle per store per month for four years. Getting ahead of myself. Didn't work, did it? No. Did not work. So they finally decided to put it into person-to-person -person distribution. Now the numbers make sense. Went from three million to 208 million in five years. Is it working? Yes. This is our story. And if you want to be a professional network marketer, in my opinion, you have to tell the story because facts tell and stories sell. How many can tell that story right now? If I called you up here, you could tell that story. That's pretty good. Okay, if you did not raise your hand, it's my opinion, that's how I got to pretend, I told that story again and again and again and again. And I didn't forget parts. But if you, if you need to put a little but if you need to put a little thing together to remember where you're going, by all means do it. But this is a story that you're going to need to tell because we are unique. Nobody else has an ABC primetime investigative report. Now, how do you tell it? You call somebody up and you say, listen, do you have 10 minutes? I just learned that today. Thank you, Michael. Do you have 10 minutes? You got 10 minutes? Yep. Anybody say that? Let's hear it. You got 10 minutes? And they'll say, well, why? And you say, because I've come upon something you need to see. Got 10 minutes? I've come upon something you need to see. What is it? Do you got 10 minutes? I've got, I've got something you need to see. And they say, well, what is it? I can't tell you. You need to see it like I did. Do you have 10 minutes? Be very, you can text somebody. Thank you, Mark Welch. You got 10 minutes? 
He also said you can text coffee, question mark, I've got something you've got to see. Is this easy or is it easy? And when they say, what is it? You say it's an ABC primetime investigative report that aired back in 2005. Can you watch it right now? I really, really believe in Sam, and I'm not talking about lab coats. I'm not talking about doctors and lab coats. I want you to watch this thing. Do you know John Quinones? If someone says, is this network marketing? I would submit to you didn't do your job. You told them too much. And maybe you've been in networking before. And if they just say, look at ABC, just check this out. It's an ABC report from 2005. So very simple, little bit of information. And I love what Melissa said. Your signal must be higher than the person standing in front of you. Now, I am not talking about arrogance. I am not talking about being bossy, although I can do that pretty well. I'm talking about conviction and passion, yes. enthusiasm and joy about what you're about to share. Not fear, not trepidation, not anxiety. Look at this room. Is everybody excited about our products? Yeah. Then just think of this room when you get ready to share this with somebody. I was saying, I, you know, you walk through the airport after an event and you keep running into all these life vantage people and they make eye contact, high five, smile. We don't even know that they're in life vantage until they flash us that big smile, right? But then all of a sudden you move to the next airport and make your connection and you're smiling and looking around and everybody looks at you like you got a flipping problem, right? <laughs> Take a picture, it lasts longer, right? Or they look at you like, man, do I have something on me? I mean, this girl is weird. She's smiling at me. You can go by 30, 40, or 50 people 30, 40, 50 people, and nobody will meet your eye and smile back at you. Am I right? Yes. They don't. Why? Because they're terrified. They're terrified. People live in fear. They live in fear of who they are. They live in fear of who you are. They live in fear of being able to pay, pay their bills. They live in fear of being able to raise their kids. They live in fear of everything. So if it takes you 20 or 30 people, before someone says, wow, I'll watch that. Ooh, that was interesting. Sure, I'll take the next step. Why would you get your feelings hurt? Do you understand? If you can't even get anyone to smile at you at the airport, why would you worry about them saying, no, they won't watch a video? Or I'm not interested. Who cares? Do you all write this down, non-attachment. Do what you do every day with love in your heart and do not be attached to the results. There is somebody out there that is on their knees and they are praying for what you have. Do you get that? Yes. How many of you in here were praying for what we have? Praying for an opportunity. How many of you were praying for a product that would do what ProTandem does? Just a few of you, really? No. Are you kidding me? I was, how many of you were praying for a product that would do what True Science does? <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe you're not my age. I'll tell you what, I was like, I needed that stuff. In fact, true story, guy comes down on an airplane to meet me. And I said, okay, excuse me, where's the product? And he said, well, I don't have it on me. I said, are you kidding me? You're a salesman, you don't have the product. And he said, well, I got a couple pills for myself. I said, that'll be fine. Took it out of his hands. And he had one skincare sample. And there was another lady there with me, and that was Stu Brody's wife. And I said, that'll be fine. I took it right out of his hand. I figured she's not gonna build it, I am. Right? You get it? Would you have taken that sample? Oh my gosh, do you guys like true science? Yeah. Woo! All right, good, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so who am I? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we know that we're not going to be attached to the results, right? And we are going to share it with everybody. And we are not going to prejudge because you have no idea who's gonna do this. This has been said, you don't know. We have skin, some of us have hair, we have <laughs> knees and we have feet if we're lucky. You cannot look inside someone's heart and decide who is gonna do this business. Yep. You don't know. My friend Carrie Motluck, I said, don't even worry about that one. She is not a deer in headlights, she's a fawn in headlights. She is never doing this. And, and Carrie is a pro six on her way to pro seven today. I was wrong. 
dead wrong. And if you prejudge, you will be dead wrong too. I guarantee it. So put everybody on your list. So the number one thing you do is you decide you are not going to be attached to the results and you are going to be fearless. So write it down. I'm not going to be attached and I'm going to be fearless and I'm going to go through everybody and I'm going to invite with passion, enthusiasm, conviction, and excitement. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then you are going to get a partner. Somehow, some way, you're going to get a partner. And it may take you a little while, but here's the thing. You're looking for generals to build your army. And the only one that matters in the beginning is you. If you look in the mirror and, you're and you are weak, your business is weak. And I don't care who's behind you. If I look in the mirror today and I'm weak, my business is weak. Because it begins with me, and I don't care if you're a pro one or a pro ten. You have to be strong every day. You have to have both feet in the game every day. You have to, do your, you have to think your business full time every day. And that's hard. I mean, I lost sleep for years because I thought my business full time every single day. Now at least I can have a good night's sleep, which is a gift. So you're going to have non-attachment. You're going to have enthusiasm. You're going to share with anybody, everybody. You're not going to prejudge. And now we're going to talk about how do you get your people started right. Are you good with that? OK, so you open up the blueprint. How many times have you seen that, pl that gray thing and it isn't even open? You have to open it. Maybe you're opening it with them on Skype. Maybe they're on the phone. Maybe they're right, not right next to you. But you've got to take them through the blueprint to prosperity. And you take it when it's good for them. Give them a little homework. I want you to open up your blueprint and I want you to read the beginning part. I want you to read, give them a section. I want you to read this. If they don't do it, tell me, and by the way, we're going to meet tomorrow. If you don't do it, no big deal, just let me know because then we'll have to move the appointment back. Do you see? You're going to have to ask them to do something. If you do this, then I'll do that. If you read Prosper Magazine, then we can get it together tomorrow. If you order this book or order the blueprint or the, the proven plan, we can get together tomorrow. Give them some homework. Write down your top 10 family members and we'll talk tomorrow. If they get to, did you do that and they didn't do it? Say, you know what? Let's meet tomorrow. Do you understand that you shouldn't give your time unless they're willing to give some? You got to meet each other halfway. Are you with me? Yeah. Give them some homework. Maybe all they have to do is open up and read that health report. I don't care what you tell them to do, but tell them to do something. They have to earn your time. You are busy. I don't care if you have nobody in your business, you are busy because this is the mindset of a leader. This is a mindset of an elite distributor. So from day one, you have to have a mindset of an elite distributor. I've got a new gal in the room and I don't have to give her any homework. I probably have to tell her to take some protanum and go to bed because she is doing so much homework on her own. So if someone's doing homework on their own, you feed them. You don't, not fire hose style, drip, drip, drip. Give them a little of this, give them a little of that, unless they want the fire hose, okay? And then you give it to them. So first step, you've got to talk about someone's why. Was it Mike Lyman? Yeah, he said, you know, people underestimate the power of the why. You have to spend a little time on the why, but I, I, I tell you, five, 10 minutes, you can get real serious with someone's why. Real serious if it's their kids. I mean, how long would it take Joe to tell you his why? Do you need a lot of time? with Joe to know it's about his kids and his wife? Yes or no? Yeah. No, you don't need a lot of time, you know, right? So you gotta get to his, I think we're a little confused on that one. Okay, so we're talking about Joe's why. Do you think it takes time to know what his why is? No. no. So here's the thing, if someone says they wanna stay home with the kids, you say to them, awesome, and you take a piece of paper and say, stay home with kids. What does that look like? What does that look like? Tell me more about that. When you stay home with the kids, what does it look like? Do you get up at eight? Do you get up at six? Do you get up at 10? Do you make breakfast at home? Do you go to Denny's? What do you do? Do you go to the beach? Do you go to the mall? I don't know what you do. Tell me about that. What does that look like? Tell me more about that. What will your, what will your life be like? And then you've got to talk about, you've got to get into it, right? If you're at the beach, is it winter? Are you walking in your Ugg boots and your Lululemon pants with the lining because you can afford them? Or are you in a bikini getting baked in the sun? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Do you have an umbrella? What are the kids doing? Are they boogie boarding because they're eight? Or are they surfing because they're 15? Do you get it? You have to get the, do you get it? 
They have to feel it. They have to feel what is it going to feel like when they have acquired what they want. If you want your husband to stay home, what is that going to look like? Where will you take your first trip together? What will you do? Will you jump a plane and go up north? Will you go to Vancouver and check out the city? Will you go to New York and go to a show? What's it going to look like when you're free? Do you understand that? We want to know what it's going to feel like. Why do we do that? Because they are going to get popped in the nose by somebody soon. When they start with the warm market, which we encourage, they're going to get burned. So you need to be re they need to be ready for the burning so that they can just laugh it off and say, oh, yeah, I was warned about that. So when they call and tell you, oh, my gosh, you were right. Oh, my gosh, my mom burned me. You can say, yes, but, you know, I don't think she really understands how badly you want to be on the beach with your kids with that breakfast right in the in the heater opening up the, the thing and having open it up at whatever it is and having pancakes and sausage and watching your kids watch right you're gonna say are you gonna let her steal your dream are you gonna let your best friend steal the dream of you having your husband home so you guys can jump that plane go up to Vancouver go over to New York go to the show seriously come on now are they gonna pay that are they gonna fund that trip for you get it right the why, write down the why, then what is it that you want and when do you want it? What do you want and when do you want it and what are you willing to do to get it? That's the big one. You want to be able to go over to New York? What's that going to cost you? How many, how long is that going to take? Do we want to do it in one year, two years? You have to have a little bit of an idea what it takes, but we know the blueprint says to do 15 presentations per month. Now, I would submit to you, if you want to be pro seven in a year, you better do 15 a week. Now, I'm not saying you have to meet with 15 people face to face per week, but you better be showing them the video with excellent follow up with what Chris Christina said, the closing question. How do you see yourself getting involved in Life Vantage? Is this something you see yourself doing with me? Do you see yourself using our products or can you see some people in your life that could use what we have? Would you How many of you are very comfortable with closing questions? Raise your hand. So I'm not. I'm 10 and I'm still not comfortable. So what do I do? I ask the question, how do you see yourself getting with, involved with Life Vantage? <laughs> I'm nervous. And then I go to my happy place and I shut up because they may need time to think about it. I knew what I was going to ask. How do you see yourself getting involved with Life Vantage? But they don't know I was going to ask. So they're considering, well, or, or you know, how, do you see yourself doing this business with me? And they're thinking, and what do people do? They start yapping again and selling again. And I have a tendency to do that. So what I do is I go to my happy place. I pretend I'm doing Bikram yoga, or I pretend I'm meditating on the beach, or I pretend I'm watching my kids, my one of them skateboard, or the other one play soccer, and I just let these people go through their process. Do you get it? Because yeah. I don't like the closing question. It's kind of hard for me. So do you see how if you just disengage for a second and let them go that you can, that everybody can have a happy ending? Come on. Yeah. Like they can come back and they can say, you know, Carrie, I just want to try the product. Or they can say, you know, we've, you've never heard that one, have you? I always tell them, okay, so your kid has strep throat. Do you tell the doctor that you have to try the penicillin on you before you can give it to your kid? Now, I'm not kidding. I don't, I don't say it quite like that. I say, I know how you feel. I kind of felt the same way, too. Feel felt bound. I know how you feel. I kind of felt the same way, too. You know, I wouldn't want to suggest something to somebody unless I had experience with it. What I found when I went to PubMed.gov and when I watched the video that it, Protanin works in all the people all the time, 100% of the people, 100% of the time. It reduces oxidative stress by 40% in 30 days, not just in some of us, but in all of us. And once I saw that, it's kind of like penicillin in your kids, right? Easier? So you move them through, and then you ask another closing question. Because like Joe said, it takes five times. Now, you don't have to do all five in the same day. That might irritate somebody. But you could do two or three and see, is there anything else that's bugging you? I mean, gosh, if you could get over that, do you have the time to do this? If you could get over that and that, do you have the money to do this? Do you see yourself doing with this, this with me? Do you see how this could get you the freedom to bring your husband home? 
Okay, so where are we? We've got the, we've got the, now we make a list, right? So we've got the why. You've got to get into somebody's why and you've got to write it down for them and you've got to hold that why in your heart for them. Every day when you get up, you only have, what, 10 personals, if you're lucky, that are running with this. You think of what their why is. What is it that they want and you hold that for them. You hold it in your heart for them. You are affirming for it. They are affirming for it. Pretty soon they're making friends in this business and we're all holding it up for each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. We are holding that thought for each other. Now the next part is the list. So I'm talking to you guys, we, are, we have just gotten together. Your initial training should be no more than an hour. No more than an hour. This person may walk away from you and never do anything. They may never do anything. Don't waste your time and look like you have all the hours in the world. Because then they, it's about urgency and it's about creating posture so that they recognize your value to them and they honor and value your time and you. Has, have you ever felt like you were not valued and your time was not honored? Come on, nobody? I have. So you have to set the boundaries. I do that with my children. I teach my kids how to treat me. You're not allowed to say I hate you and you're two. You're not allowed to say that, ever. Like you can say you frustrate me, mommy, but you cannot say I hate you. And you cannot kick me in the shins either or headbutt me, no. <laughs> so you have to teach people, you gotta teach your distributors how to treat you. And the way you do that is you have boundaries and you have confidence in yourself. And you are not desperate because you know what? There's someone on their knees. And if you're wasting your time with this person who does not get back to you and who does not do what they say they're going to do and they don't read the blueprint and they don't order the books that you ask them to order, like your first year in network marketing, the abridged, I like the short one, the abridged, or the greatest networker in the world is my favorite by John Milton Fogg, greatest networker in the world. Love that book. That is a must read. If you just get into this business, greatest networker in the world. It's not about you. Oh, it's a yellow book with a chair on the front. Can't remember what, who the title is. Maybe Berg is the, is the author. Man, M-A-N-N, -N, and Berg, perhaps. I love these books. I, leaders are readers. And I don't suggest that you read at 10 o'clock in the morning when you should be making phone calls, but you need to be putting good things into your brain. If you don't like to read, get audible, because you can listen. But books are imperative. You've got to work out. You've got to go to the gym. You've got to stay fit. You've got to be the picture of health so that when people look at you, they say, I want what she has. I want what he has. Do you go to the gym? You go, heck yeah, I don't miss it. I go every day or I go five days a week. Because if you do that, God will bless your business with somebody at the gym that is going to be in your business. I guarantee it. I've always worked out through building my businesses, always because I am supposed to be the example, right? Aren't you supposed to be the example? If you're not working out, get your butt to the gym. You too, right? Get to the gym, God will bless your business. This is good for your heart and it's good for your disposition. Can you imagine if I didn't go to the gym? <gasps> when I have a bad day with my husband, he says, honey, go to yoga. Now, do not pass go. Get in your car. When is the next class? I will drive you there. <laughs> Got to do that. Okay, so the next, make a list. Not a list of customers and distributors. You make one list. And here's the thing. You don't make the list. They don't make the list. You make the list. They sit there with their head looking up and you are writing. Chris, we're going to do this. You are writing. And they are dreaming. And you, if you're in person, are looking at their cell phone. Who's this one? Who's that one? Can we call that one? Why are they in your cell phone if we can't call them? Right? You're making, why would you have a person in your cell phone? I mean, who's mean enough that you would not share this with them? Who does not deserve to be on pro tandem? Who does not deserve to have the brain food that Axio is? Who does not deserve to put true science anti-aging moisturizer on their face? You mean person, take them out of your cell phone. You've heard that said before. So this is how we make the list. If they have a list of 20 people and you run through 15 and you don't get anybody or you leave a couple messages, they may feel like, uh-oh, I'm out. I only have five people left. If you make a list of two or three or four or 500, 
They'll say, ah, we're only on number 15. I have 485 left if your list is 500. Do you see the difference in mentality? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. It's like somebody getting, oh, let me try the products. And I tell them, okay, no worries. Uncle, you want to try the products? We'll do that. But let me explain. Let me explain the mentality of that. You buy one bottle of Protanum, one bottle of True Science, or maybe even a regimen, and someone comes over and says, what is that? And you hide it and hoard it, because you only have one, and you're not going to share the skincare, because it was 160 bucks, right? You have a Vantage pack, and you've opened it up. It's laying all over the counter, and your mom comes in and says, what is that, honey? And you go, oh my gosh, mom, you have to see this video. I love you. I'm going to send a bottle of this stuff home for you. I'm going to send one for dad. In fact, I'm going to give one to my husband. Do you see the difference? So explain that. Say, look, if you're looking at this even remotely, remotely as a business, you need to start right. You need to get yourself enough product to share with a bunch of people. Because here's the thing. If you're sitting around waiting for something to happen before you build your business, it's never going to happen. If you're waiting to feel something, then you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna have a, a, bad, a bad road, first of all. And it's terrible, terrible duplication. Does that make sense? Yep. Tell people, look, the very worst, I mean, there's no, the worst thing is you have enough pro tandem for you for six months, or perhaps you and your husband for six months if you buy the big one. So it's very, very important that people have the right mindset, say if you're even possibly thinking of this as a business. Just trust me, you don't want to have one of each product, you won't even want to share. Okay, so where the heck were we? We're making a list. Make the list, it should be a lot of people, and now you're talking about your goals. Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in, where do you want to be in six months? Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you see yourself five years out? People overestimate what can happen in one to two years, and they dramatically underestimate what can happen in two to seven. I've, I've stretched to seven. It may be a five-year plan for you to get to pro seven. Who cares? You're going to be seven years older anyway, right? And you're going to be seven years down the rabbit hole of that rest of your life stuff. All those things in the beginning, I didn't even, I, I barely could come up with what hump day was. I've never really been in the corporate world, ever. So this stuff, it just doesn't even make sense to me. What was that, staycation? Never heard it. Never. I'm like, ooh, I am not letting that one in. What? No way. Staycation? If life managed went away tomorrow, I would still never heard that term, ever. Vacation. Ugh. Cancel, cancel, cancel. <laughs> Which reminds me, you better watch your languaging. It is not in five years I'm going to do this, I'm going to be doing that. It's like, oh my gosh, I am so happy. It is now 2000, what is it? Where are we? 15, 2020? And I am free. And I play golf and I do what I want to do when I want to do it with the people with whom I want to do it. I am so happy and grateful. This is awesome. You should take five minutes a day and visualize, sit your butt on a piece of selenite. <laughs> you know, one of those awesome stones, sit down, put your hands up here and be thinking, oh my gosh, this is awesome. It is 2020 and I am free. And what does that look like? Woo, right? You take out your binoculars, according to Dr. Tom Barrett. He wrote, success happens and dare to dream, work to win. Those are on audio. I listen to them all the time in my car. That guy makes me laugh, especially because he's so monotone, but it's amazing. Success happens in dare to dream, work to win. He says, take out your, your binoculars and look ahead at what is it going to look like in five years? And then you take out the magnifying glass and say, what do I have to do today to get there? What do I do right now today to get there? Maybe I make five phone calls today. Maybe I go meet three prospects today. And they're not prospects, they're potential business partners. We have to watch our languaging. We don't have a downline. That is ridiculous. Most people in my organization are 50 times smarter than I ever thought of being. I mean, seriously, they are book smart. I don't know if that's true, but do you know what I mean? We've got some pretty amazing people. I mean, I've been doing these doctor calls and just, it, it, I hope I don't mispronounce the schools that they go to, because I don't even know where they went to school. Like, I may not, I mean, I know Harvard, but you know what I mean? Like, they're so accomplished. Like, I had to learn how to say cum laude or cum laude, right? Because that, wouldn't, that would never be in my book. That would never be on my resume. But so many of these people are so bright. 
Don't call them your downline. They are your organization. They are your partners. They are your business partners, right? They are part of your team. Watch your languaging. Those words should never come out of your mouth. Okay, so we're making a list, we're making goals. When someone says they wanna be a pro seven in a year but they're gonna do five presentations a month, you better tell them that their goals are not in alignment with their, what they're willing to do. Just be honest. And if you don't know, then ask somebody. If you are brand new and you sign somebody up and you bring out that proven plan and you don't know much or the blueprint, you say, listen, I'm not that far ahead of you, but we're gonna do this together. It's kind of the blind leading the blind, and we're going to ask some questions, and we're going to do this together. Shall we run together? You help me with my why, I'll help you with yours. Maybe you signed somebody up today, and you got in yesterday. Awesome. You don't, here's the thing. Be authentic. Be real. How much time? 11 minutes? Okay, cool. <sighs> okay, man. Here we go. Anybody got the word meter going? Okay, so we have now made our why. We know where we're going and we know when we're going to be there. We visualize it every day. We know our how. We know that we're going to make a list. We know that we're going to contact people. We, we know our goals, short term and long term. And now we're going to start making phone calls with our new person. And we're going to call people up. And I mean, I've, I've done that thing of yank the phone away and say, you know what? She's frozen. It's Amanda and she's terrified. She says you are one of the neatest people she's ever had the pleasure to meet. That you are on her chicken list. And we just took you off the list. And my name is Carrie Dickey, and I'm working with her, and there, she is so excited to share something with you that she's speechless. <laughs> so, so get in front of your computer, babe, because you're going to watch a video right now. Do you know how much fun you can have with this thing if you're just honest and real? Don't take yourself so seriously. Seriously. Don't worry about it. You've got to be bad before you're good and good before you're great. Do you believe that? Yeah. You are going to be terrible. Uh, you think I was good when I stopped businessmen at the airport? Would you consider yourself to be an open-minded business person? I am in the middle of expanding an international company from $50 million to $250 million, and you are the lucky guy that gets to help me. I mean, Sharice and I did that for a, a year, and all they wanted to do was date us or give us money to invest because we were so passionate. But you know what? I, I learned fearlessness. I really don't care what you think of me anymore. It's awesome. For somebody that all I cared my whole life, I wanted to do everything right. I was a people pleaser. Oh my gosh, I hope I wear the right thing. I hope I don't have snot coming out of my nose. I hope that I don't trip in front of you. Oh my gosh, I meant to do that. I mean, I was terrified. Being me was hard. It was hard in first grade. It was hard in high school. It was hard in my first network marketing company. It was hard in my first company it was at the top. I was always apologizing for being me, always. Anybody feel like that? Okay, guess what? Stop apologizing because people don't care that much. They really are not thinking about you. They're thinking about them, right? So don't worry about it. Move forward. Have fun. Make these phone calls. Make these phone calls together. You pick up the phone and if you don't get anybody, you say, oh, this is so fun. Call me. Oh my gosh. Don't worry, it's not 911. I'm just excited. I've got something you've got to see. <laughs> Text them. I just left you a message and leave them a really crazy message. I am fired up. I just came upon something. This is an ABC prime time. You've got to call me back. Then you text them. I just left you a message. I was in Sioux Falls one time. I said, Cash Unruh, Gary Dickey here. You don't know me, but I know you. Because five people have told me that I need to be talking to you about this business. And I said, so I'm going to see you in about 90 minutes. Got a meeting over there at the Ho. I want to see you there. I'm so excited to meet you because this is for you, buddy. Everyone tells me in this town that I need to know you. Goodbye. And then I texted him and I said, left you a message. And he's like, who is that woman? And he said, I have to go to the meeting just to know who she is. I just got to see who that is. Do you see how you can have fun with it? How many of you take yourselves too seriously? Okay, so I don't care if you put on a piece of music and do a little dancing before you start making phone calls, but you got to get the mojo moving. You got to get your mojo before you make the phone calls. Woo! You got your mojo. You got to get your Axio on. Okay. So then you make phone calls and you make phone calls for your people. And if someone calls your person back after you've left a crazy message, all they have to say is, hold on, I got this lady on the phone. 
because she knows way more about this than I do. But first, you've got to watch this ABC primetime investigative report. Now, remember, if you're calling someone, you can say, listen, I've called you for a very specific reason, but I remember last time we talked, you told me that your daughter was going to be in that ski competition. How did that go? Do you write, I'm calling you for a specific reason. I really do have something I want to talk about. But last time we talked, you, were, you thought you were going to get fired. How did that turn out? Are you okay? Do you have your job? And then when they say, no, I don't have my job, you don't go, awesome! I've got something for you. You ask a lot of questions. Oh my gosh, tell me about that. Oh, what did you do? Did you come home and tell your wife directly or did you keep it under the hat for the week? Right? Talk about it. Draw them out. Right? Okay, so we're going to invite. And then we are going, when you call somebody, you better know what the next step is. My mother always taught me when we were building a fundraising business together. You guys, I'm a waitress. I'm a fitness instructor. I built a, 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 a fundraising company with my mom for a decade. I'm a mutt in business. I've never really, I never made more than $40,000 in any calendar year in my life. I was not Mike Lyman, a doctor. I was not Mark Welch, a, 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 a preacher, a minister, right? I was not Michelle Scaff, everything she was, actress and real estate, everything. I'm not that. I was a waitress. I was a fitness instructor. I was a personal trainer. And I helped my mom build a fundraising company and I sold books door to door. But I was passionate at all of it. I was the best waitress. I was the best fitness instructor. I was the best fundraiser. You could be the best strawberry picker on the side of the five freeway in Southern California and you still make five bucks an hour. You have to get into the right arena to create wealth. And you're here. So you best figure this thing out by being bad before you're good, good before you're great. You got that? Okay. I can't go over everything we've done now. I just don't have enough time because I only have five minutes. Okay, so you're making the phone calls. You need to know your goal. Your goal is to get him to a meeting. How do you find a meeting? You go to bigbluecalendar.com and you say, okay, I'm going to invite this person in Atlanta. When's the next meeting in Atlanta? When is the next big event? We do three things in our business. We expose people to ABC primetime. We promote from event to event and we build community. Write it down. Expose, promote, build community. We expose people to ABC primetime over and over and over again. And then we go back. I could go to Sioux Falls today and pick up all of the ABC orphans that people didn't follow up on and build my business again to pro 10. Do you believe me? Yeah. I swear. I know I could. I could go to Denver. And someone will say, yeah, I saw that thing. I'm going, you, if you saw it, you might have viewed it. If you saw it, you'd be in this thing. Watch it again, right? You didn't see it. You might have viewed it. You might have looked at it. You might have sat on your bottom and pretended to watch it. But you didn't see it or you'd be in. you got to watch this thing. So you've got to follow up. That's my point. I'm like, what was my point? The point is they watch the ABC primetime and then you have to follow up by asking a question. What, did, what impressed you about what you just saw? Now, Fred Davis taught me something really amazing. He said, when they ask a question like, well, no, when they make a statement, oh, well, you know, I've, I, I, I've taken lots of things like this. Goodbye. Thank you for your time. When they say, well, you know, I, I know this is all, you know, this is probably network marketing. It's an attitude and it's that statement. Most times when people make statements, they're not interested. If they make two statements, I'm done with them. If they ask a question like, wow, this was a long time ago, 2005, what's happened since then? Or is this true? Or do you have that little yellow pill? Or wow, Dr. McCoy, that was interesting. Can you tell, are there more studies? I mean, did they ever do that research? Do you get the difference? Oh, I, you know, I saw that. Yeah, I've heard about things like, uh-huh, mm, yeah, I take turmeric. Mm, I know about ashwagandha. Eh. Not that interesting, right? Yeah. Next, who cares? Non-attachment. But you have to follow up and you have to know what you're inviting them to. 
I'd like you to get together. I'd like to pick up the phone right now and make a call to my, my friend that I'm doing this with, my, my mentor. I'd like to give, I, I've got this gal that's on fire with this. I really want you to talk with her. I want you to be able to get your questions answered, but I'm too new to do that. Can we do that? Tell me what impressed you. Let's go. There's a meeting on Tuesday at, th at, at Tuesday night at 7. Can you make it? It's going to be an hour of your life. Give me an hour of your life and I'll never bug you again. Right? Or there's a training on Saturday. I'd just love for you to come to the first hour. Do you see something you can stay? If not, no problem. I'm not attached. I've got something I want you to take a look at. It may or may not be for you. This is Fred Davis. It may or may not be for you. But I'm excited. And I just want you to know why I'm excited. Will you take a look? Will you come with me? If I do this, will you do this? If I send this magazine, will you read it? If I send you to PubMed, will you look it up? Got it? Yep. Follow up. So you show the video, you follow up, and you have to know where you're taking them because each exposure is only an opportunity for the next exposure. Most people don't get in after the first exposure. Most people aren't Steve Wheeler. Yeah, I got a grand to burn. I don't pay my bills anyway. <laughs> hey, you got another opportunity I can sign up for? Most people are not like that. Got another one? I got $5,000. <laughs> so you, you're looking for, you're just looking to dangle the next thing. Believe me, if you keep inviting them and they don't want to go, they'll say, listen, stop calling me. And you say, listen, awesome. And you can say, look, I I'm ready to stop calling you, but would it be okay if I keep you apprised of my progress? You're going to hear about this. So please remember that I am the person that brought it to you. So when the next person brings it to you, just remember I was here first and I just love you and I can't imagine anything more fun than going to the top of this thing together. Will you do me that much? Will you remember that I'm the one that brought it to you? And then you move on and you don't worry and you do it again and again and again. And when they have a concern, like it's too expensive, which uh, that one is, I thought it was going to be a hundred bucks, so I don't even get that at all. But we've got a whole section in the blueprint on resolve concerns. It's simple. It's not easy. People are like, oh my gosh, I want the nuts and bolts. And then they get the nuts and bolts and they're like, isn't there another secret, Carrie? Can I just get you in that back corner and ask what you really did? That's what I really did. That's what I really did over and over and over again. But here's what it looks like. Get in or get out of my way. And, it, and it's nice. You're not snotty. You just have, you've got to get from here to there. So it's, would you like to join me? Okay, step aside. Get in or get out of my way, right? And, and listen, I'll be back for you. I'm always here for you. You can always come yank me from behind. In fact, I'll come check on you from time to time. But the fact is, I'm going that way. And I need to get to the wall. I need to get over there. And if you want to come with me, you are super welcome to come with me. But I got to go. This is big. This is big. And when the time is right in your life, you can come with me. And the last thing is, you guys, people's lives change. They get divorced. I mean, I hate to say it, but they do. They get divorced. They get diagnoses. They finish school. Uh, they finish jobs. They get fired or they quit. They retire. They become empty nesters. Do you understand all the changes that we have in our lives? The only thing you can count on is change. So an opportunity that is wrong on Tuesday when they get laid off becomes right on Wednesday. And if you don't check back, someone else is going to sign them up, which is not allowed in our vocabulary. We don't sign anybody up. We enroll them. We either enroll them or they join us as business partners. We don't sign people up. Blah. Yuck. Right? So we've got to use good languaging. So with that being said, there's a guy out there by the name of Paul Zane Pilzer, and he wrote a book called The Next Millionaires. And he says that 10 million new millionaires will be created in the next decade. And they will be in wellness and network marketing. I was one of those. New millionaires. And I'm a waitress, and I never met, I mean, I shouldn't really say that. I was, I waited tables at one time, and I was a fitness instructor at one time, and I was a fundraiser at one time, and I was a scared little girl at one time, and I was a terrified top of the company MLMer at one time. I'm none of that anymore. I'm Carrie Dickey, and I am a pro 10, and I want all of you to be one of the next millionaires. Come with me.